Describing Call of Duty as a seasonal shooter means more than giving a nod to its preference for holiday release schedules. Seasonal also describes the four varieties of period settings the series clumsily cycles through like a teenager trying to figure out a rent cycle his first day away from home. You have modern warfare for contemporary battles against vague Russian separatists and Middle Easterners so no one gets upset over playing the villain. Cold War, where you get to relive your grandparents' red scare paranoia of suspecting everyone of secretly being a communist. Future Warfare, for facing off against Kevin Spacey and other well-known TV actors in the near future. And finally, World War II, where you get to find out who's going to win World War II this time. Surprise, it was the Allies. But Call of Duty Vanguard puts a spin on the old theme. It sets the campaign at the end of the European theater during the fall of Berlin, then proceeds to unspin itself by having the majority of the game be comprised of flashbacks earlier battles of the war, all to tell the tale of a group of elite Allied soldiers who all seemed like they were doing just fine fighting by themselves, but have now been brought together for a desperate mission against an all but defeated enemy. As we were all taught in history class, the Allies filled in near super soldiers against the Axis, but only at the very end of the war when it was pretty much over. Someone needs to send Activision down and carefully explain to them the definition of Vanguard, which means a group of people at the forefront of a fighting force, not the tail end of one. Though it's not as if this is the first time COD has gone in that direction. Both Black Ops and Modern Warfare are more or less of an elite squad that is uniquely skilled to save democracy by staring unrelentingly into the villain's eyes while spitting unbreakable determination and moral righteousness. But those are settings where it makes more sense to focus on such a small and specialized force, since it's either Cold War espionage or special forces fighting nationless enemies. World War II is the worst fit for it since it was a campaign of entire nations dedicating themselves to a cause as opposed to a small group. I care a lot more about the story of an average door-to-door -door salesman who volunteered, played his part, and then went back to his regular life than any of Cod Vanguard's cliched super soldiers with their bloody past and adversity. A coalition of allied commandos thrown together and aimed at where our enemy was most vulnerable. This was meant to be our first and only mission. Seeing as this game is set during the end of the war, I don't see a path for Activision to wring more milk from the teat with these characters, unless they're planning on setting a game during the Korean War, but this team working together there would be a lot harder to believe, since one of them is Russian and would therefore be a possible adversary after this, and not to mention that anything set after this would be stepping on Cold War's toes. The opening mission begins with the team making their way along a train, well, two trains to be exact, and they kill a lot of German soldiers as they hop back and forth between them, but there doesn't seem to be any reason to go on a killing spree here, since this train is headed to their target. They could have just waited in the car they started in, because all they do is make their way to the head of this train and then wait there to arrive. Now that we've been properly shot at, might the officer in charge tell us what the hell we're doing here? That submarine base is our final stop. Once we're in, we move to secure the objective. He wants us to secure it, but he won't tell us what it is. Kingsley's been dancing around that since the get-go. Can this imaginary special forces trope please end? You don't put together a group of elite soldiers and send them on a mission blind and just hope they can wing it. No matter how good a soldier may be, they can still be caught unprepared. This ain't just another easter egg hunt, is it? Yeah, mate, what's a bloody story? We don't quite know. You mean the SO fucking E doesn't quite know? You know what? I'm gonna go pull the brakes. All we have is a name. Phoenix. So SOE put together a multinational elite fighting force and sent them into hostile territory because they intercepted the word Phoenix. Just focus on finishing out the Nazis and you can look through documents and question prisoners afterward instead of assembling the Avengers. It bears mentioning that the concept of a special forces group consisting of a single soldier from every allied nation is pretty dumbfounding. Team Anglo might be believable, but I don't see Stalin sending his best sniper to the west when the Red Army is currently storming Berlin. Not to mention the skill set of the group is all over the place and hardly complimentary. Novak's only special skill is he can crack safes, and one of these soldiers is an elite pilot so he's a bit wasted on a stealthy ground infiltration. Gameplay-wise, I don't have many complaints. COD is a competent stop-and-pop shooter that does most of the heavy, medium, and light lifting for you. You do all the normal COD things, like admire your ruggedly handsome player character in between bouts of shooting Nazis, and then wait for your devilishly handsome NPC allies to open a door for you, so you can continue shooting and admiring people with more testosterone than blood for 4-5 to five hours, before hopping into the multiplayer and coming to the conclusion that 1. Always leave the mic chat off, and 2. Maybe all of this could have been prevented had the Axis won. COD is like playing a piece of wartime propaganda. I guess the only source spawn I had to apply cream to are the new enemies that can kill you with one hit. I can accept that when it's a soldier bayoneting me, but dogs also kill you instantly the moment they begin humping your leg, which is just not how attack dogs work. Attack dogs typically grab one of your limbs and restrain you while someone else does the finishing off, and then they hump you. Look, they're Nazi dogs, I get to make whatever joke I want. We can't go in loud. Arthur? Whatever's in those papers is the best kept secret in the Third Reich, and the crowds kept them here, in the arse end of nowhere. So what? It makes no sense. It's like leaving the crown jewels on the front porch. You don't yet know that Project Phoenix is actually that valuable. You are here in part to discover what it is. And let's be honest, the name more or less gives it away. I wasn't that surprised to learn that Project Phoenix is a plan to revive the Reich. 
Somehow, they never got around to explaining how that was going to happen. Maybe Arthur was placed on this team for his disappearing act instead of his leadership qualities, because he somehow goes from behind Novak to in front of him inside this narrow submarine hallway after a steam pipe breaks. Stun grenades weren't something you would see until the 60s, so Arthur's team being brought down by one inside the sub is a bit off. Being a bit off would describe most of the historical weapons in this game. Take the revolver shotgun, of which there were only a few hundred models ever produced. But here they're found throughout Germany and even used by Imperial Japanese forces. Gun and accuracies aren't just limited to multiple weapons being nothing but test cases in reality or existing before they were actually created, like the STG-44, as some of the guns I picked up had holographic sights and drum magazines on them. And once I even found a grenade launcher that I'm pretty sure never existed and would have been right at home in the Wolfenstein series. Vanguard can almost be described as alternative history, but I think when they say alternative history, it just means they can cut corners on everything. Does the Negro give orders in English too? And do you follow them? Sie wissen, wie es ist, von einem schwarzen Befehler entgegenzunehmen. Er spricht auch Deutsch! <laughs> Please, proceed. Your Rhineland accent. You must be from Neustadt. During the occupation, you saw French soldiers who looked like me carry guns in your streets. Marry your women. The Allies didn't use the war as a way to showcase how much more progressive they were than their enemies, mainly because they were busy being pretty prejudiced themselves, just not genocidally so. Vanguard presents a lovely Neapolitan ice cream cast of diverse characters, who seem to be a group of time-traveling millennials for how progressive they are. The game correctly plays up how racist the Nazis were, but completely downplays prejudice to the point of non-existence among the Allies, which gets all the stranger when in a later level an American pilot is rescued by an all-black army unit. And then you have Arthur, who's in command of the team. Even the white Aussie at one point goes on a rant about how the Brits don't trust his own people enough to put them in charge. That's the big issue of trying to shoehorn modern political sensibilities into a well-documented historical setting without addressing or even including those old prejudices. People who want to tell a period piece don't leave out the more ugly parts except for when it applies to the villains. That's what corporate products engage in. The first character you play as, Novak, is killed to show the stakes are for real this time. Much like they were for real the last dozen times Cod pulled this trick and killed the player character in the opening mission. I was already prepared for Novak to die since he was the only member of the group who didn't speak. The game spent no time on him and expects you to know who he is by reading a comic. Who the hell out there is reading Cod comics? Arthur will get us out of this. What, cause he's your mate? He wasn't always. But I've seen them in action. If the whole point is to show how this group bond and trust each other, you'll have a hard time making it believable when most of the game's time is spent with each individual member in the past before they even met each other. Uh, thunder! Don't shoot! Damn you, Kingsley! We picked you as a crowd! How could you possibly mistake Arthur for a German soldier? He's black. Look, I'm with Arthur. We finished the mission. All right, Kingsley. Every member of Vanguard has a special skill that singled him out for being a unique and capable soldier, besides Novak who was simply good at cracking safes, which doesn't seem like enough to get you placed in a special forces group. Upon finding out the commanding officer for the platoon is dead, Arthur assumes command for the assault on the gun batteries and now has the ability to command other soldiers. I say command, but this isn't exactly a deep mechanic. You just tell them to attack the only target in front of them that can be attacked. And this isn't exactly a special skill that marks one for a multinational team of elite soldiers. It's rank. You could just pull the debris away from the gate instead of holding it up so people can crawl under. We've got a job to do! Get out of there! Best shot! Arthur is such a gifted leader that with one line of encouragement, he brings a shell-shocked man in a fetal position to his feet and back into the fight. Despite being uphill in a dug-in defensive position, the German soldiers advance downhill through the smoke screen and get shot all to pieces. Sergeant, the flare! Bombardments any minute! If the Navy is still over the horizon, they couldn't even see the flare to know Arthur had destroyed the gun so they wouldn't need to bombard the area. I have spoken with the Fuhrer on exactly one occasion. He recommended a book to me, The Passing of the Great Race, by an American, a man named Madison Grant. I think Hitler would probably recommend his own book. For a COD game, the cutscenes sure seem to be getting longer. From the moment I fired a flare in the flashback to D-Day, to the beginning of Polina's flashback to Stalingrad took over 10 minutes of watching characters talk to each other. Misha, mm. what you got there? Empty bottles? I'm training fresh partisans. Our comrades already know how to drink. These will be Molotovs. When you consider the fact that Molotov cocktails were named that to mock the Soviet foreign minister of the same name during the winter war with Finland, it's suspect that Polina's brother would be using the term. Oh, 
I'm going to be late. Pick a language. Are they speaking to each other in English or Russian? The setting dictates it would almost assuredly be speaking to each other in Russian around their dinner table. Polina, besides being a crack shot with a rifle, is skilled in parkour. Part of me wonders how much of the skill was influenced by videos of Russian kids jumping around rooftops. Sure, during an air raid, I'm going to run over the rooftops. Tell me, what other missions the Allies have in Germany? I believe their goal is to defeat you. What did you tell them? We traded torture tips. Relax. I told the same lies as you. Which is the number one reason why you don't lock prisoners up together during interrogation. Because you'll want to see if what they tell you matches up or contradicts each other. When we get out of here, the first thing I'm going to do is head to the pictures. See les trois mousquetaires. Let Edith Merah break my heart all over again. And you, Lucas? What's the first thing you'll do when we're out of here? You've been locked up for less than a day. This is the kind of conversation you have after hopelessness has set in so you can cheer yourself up. The Red Army is practically knocking on the door of this place. As long as you don't get yourselves killed, you're golden. Wade can somehow reload his plane's machine gun during flight. S-18 has five. S-3 has one. Ah! S-17 has one. Anyone else? S-17 and S-18, it's all on you. While dropping what's supposed to be his last bomb on the second carrier, I notice that Wade's plane has all three bombs still on it. At least one should be missing after being dropped on the previous carrier. He is one of the war's greatest pilots, but he needed a team. Apparently Arthur wanted to take one of the war's greatest pilots, who destroyed two carriers, out of a plane so he could do ground operations on the western front that was wrapping up. Richter kills the one member of the team he hasn't bothered to question yet. I tried to nab us a getaway plane, but that didn't work. By the time I got here, you guys were already locked up. You tried to steal a getaway plane even though you had no idea where the rest of your team had been taken or if they were still alive. How was any of that supposed to work? Were you just going to land at a German airfield and walk off? I borrowed a bomb from the Ruskies and turned myself in. We got about, uh, about an hour before that wall blows wide open and we waltz right out of here. If we live that long? I can't trust him. He's just a fucking pilot. A fucking ace pilot is what you mean. I'm with the lady. What the hell do you know about explosives? Yeah? Well, fuck you too, then. I'll tell you why we can trust him. I can tell you exactly why you can trust Wade. By detailing an event that has nothing to do with the situation, and I also wasn't present for. I'm just telling you a report I read. But it stated quite clearly that Wade grew as a person and learned to trust others. Very official. Here's an idea for the Japanese pilots. Don't follow Wade through the treacherous canyon. You're in airplanes. Fly over it. He has to come out into the open at some point, and you would then have the advantage of altitude. When Wade was airborne, he was the most dangerous thing in the skies. But if you fly too close to the sun, eventually, your wings will get burnt. If someone is flying and then crashes or is shot down, I advise you strongly to resist the urge to compare it with Icarus. Wade was impelled by a piece of wreckage and Mateo pulls out of him, and then he leaves him to go find help since Wade was too injured to be moved. Except that right after this, Wade gets up and fights his way through Japanese forces and his injury is never mentioned again. You only covered Wade's head, and left him right next to the crash site Japanese forces will almost certainly search. Wade has the ability to perceive his enemy's location through dense jungle foliage and shoot in slow motion. This was a skill he honed, being an ace pilot who fought from inside a sealed cockpit and with constant propeller noise in an environment where enemy's planes and ships would be seen from miles away. And this was a perfect match for detecting ground troops hidden from view. This level taught me while we don't see many games focusing on the Pacific War. Fighting in jungle suck, and that constituted most of the non-naval fighting. Come on, a little slap does not equate to a bloody screen. These Japanese soldiers are using a lot of German weapons, including that revolver shotgun I mentioned earlier. My measurement for how much you can stretch historical inaccuracies is defined by how hard it is for me to look up the truth with a Google search. If I come up with an answer within one search, it's too liberal. Do you speak Japanese? Anime hadn't been invented yet, so there was no reason to learn. However, you seem to speak pretty good English, so you could question Wade in that. You know how to use a gun? Went through basic just like you. Wade went through basic, huh? Seems like you would need a bit more than that to be recruited into an elite team for ground missions. Lewis is shot in the back, meaning the bullet would have gone through the fuel tank of the flamethrower that was strapped to him. But Wade straps it on and it works just fine. Grenades don't explode if the lever never releases. I don't believe I've ever had to send weapons this much in COD before. Val dive bomb. You know anyone can fly? This was your plan all along. My man can take the base. Slow down the Japanese. But if we had someone in the air, wouldn't that be something?
You have no idea if that Japanese plane is fueled up, armed, or in any condition to fly though. This is a lot of danger to put yourself in, just to get one plane up in the air to attack a Japanese position when you could radio in for air support on the same target. And this plane likely would have been shot up as they rolled it onto the field considering that there are Japanese troops right next to them. That bomb didn't seem all that effective to me. It detonated on the side of the mountain. But the 93rd charge in like the defenses are down. Even if we escape, we're gonna be dead before we reach the door. Maybe not. I could point out how stupid it is that Nazis didn't check her clothing for hidden weapons, but the larger problem is that the plot is built around these interrogations, and somehow COD makes the prisoners feel like they're in complete control while the sneering Nazis dance in the palm of their hand. The main character's balls are just too big to be believable. Ironically, it's the Nazis who feel like the underdogs here. They're on the brink of losing the war and are placing all their chips on one unlikely scenario. All of these Germans with winter clothing kind of ignores one of the logistical reasons they were pushed out of Russia. Helena being spotted and shot at by snipers multiple times suggests she may in fact be the worst sniper of all time, which is an issue for a character depicted as a legendary sniper. My favorite segment in any first person shooter is when you have to carry an injured person with one hand while shooting a pistol in the other, and somehow reloading the gun when it's empty. It's one of those things everyone knows is wrong, from the developers to the testers to even the players, but no one is going to demand a realistic moment of desperate struggle when you can have an heroic struggle with easy mode turned on since enemies die in one hit and your now godlike sidearm has infinite ammo. You can go prone in Vanguard, but it seems to really confuse the enemy AI. When they got up close, they couldn't aim down far enough to actually shoot me. Jump scare Nazi. He could have just shot through the wall if he knew Polina was there. The fight against Steiner is ripped straight from the fight against David in The Last of Us. It seems developers break this cat and mouse fight out only for the most morally repugnant bosses. Cannibals, Nazis, previous main characters, and Republicans. The glaring issue with a fight like this is that after every successful attack, the villain has to knock you off him, and instead of seizing that advantage, must run away to take up a new position so the same thing can happen at least three times. Turns out Freisinger didn't have much connection with Polina after all. She just took a letter that Steiner received from him. I don't see why that made Polina single Freisinger out as her personal nemesis. The infamous Lady Nightingale brought Stalingrad back from the brink. Her actions inspired the Russians to take back their city and go on the offensive. That statement is going to receive some big, angry historian energy. From what I could gather, Freisinger was recruiting Steiner for some special project. Project Phoenix. According to the letter Steiner received, Freisinger was recruiting him for a special project, Project Phoenix. The guy was already planning this before the war even turned against Germany. There's no way out of here. Unless, of course, you have decided to do the intelligent thing. You can get me out of life? What? I can. <laughs> you two-faced bastard. All right. I'll tell you what you want to know. Richter is aware that Germany is all but beaten and Hitler is dead. But that doesn't stop him from buying the lie that one of Arthur's team would cut a deal and turn traitor at the last moment when they have no reason to. I know why you chose to cooperate. I would not take orders from a Negro either. <laughs> you got it all wrong, mate. No, don't follow. I don't care what color his skin is. Haven't you heard about the Aussies and the Brits? We were the pieces of shit flushed down the crown's dunny. Is this the reason they made Lucas Australian instead of a New Zealander like the soldier's character is based off? This stupid pretend reason for betraying the team? Lucas is good with explosives, so his special ability gives him a lot of grenades. Besides Novak with his safe cracking, Lucas feels the most useless since his special ability is having a lot of pockets. <laughs> That's Jump Scare Nazi number two. This game is distilling Nazis down to haunted house actors. Lucas came across photographs of Rommel and Freisinger here in Libya. Arthur didn't select this team due to their connection to Freisinger, since they didn't even know of Freisinger's involvement beforehand, but that keeps propping up as a common link between members. Like before, you could just pull the debris away from the rocks instead of trying to shove it to the side so it slides back into place after you let go. The fact that I've been using STG-44s here in 1942 before they even existed was bad enough, but just what the hell is this grenade launcher? I'm positive this never existed even as a prototype. It doesn't even look like it's from the same time period. This was never about winning the war. This was a coup. This was a coup. Temple off. That's how he's getting them out. 
Taking the Reich underground. I really don't get the plan. Freisinger and his allies have been working on this for three years. That's well before the war turned against Germany. There were far better opportunities to do this before now. And where exactly would you even rebuild from? Taking over a country is hard enough. Taking over a country and having it adopt Nazism would be an even harder sell in the wake of World War II. It probably would have worked. I thought the bomb weight planet was supposed to blow the wall out so they can all escape. All it does is cause a brief distraction so Lucas can kill the guard and grab Richter. Richter thinks Freisinger killed Hitler. Yeah, he's taken the Reich underground. Look, we can get out right now. Get ourselves on the first transport, be home in time for supper. Or we can end this. Hunt down Freisinger, bury the Reich for good. Or you could radio the Red Army to shoot down any planes leaving Tippelhof Airport. That loading gate transition makes no sense. Arthur and Lucas hold the rubble up while the others crawl underneath. Then Arthur lets go as Lucas holds it up for him to crawl under. But no one was holding it up for Lucas who crawls right past Arthur. The Germans fielded heavily armored flamethrower troops according to God. I see Wade brought his Type 100 Japanese submachine gun with him all the way from Papua New Guinea to Germany. Must have been a bitch to keep ammo for it. We need him alive, boss. The intel he's got's what we came for. You have a plane full of intelligence. I don't think you need Freisinger when he's collected all in written form for you. But the game wants to present a dumb decision moment that isn't really a decision. Since if you don't kill Freisinger, Polina will do it for you. How about this? Project Nova. I can beat it. Project Ether. Reviving the dead. They actually made zombies canon in the campaign. It's Project Aggregate. Secret V2 rocket facility. You think you could fly one of those? Ha! I could fly anything. No, you couldn't since there was no cockpit. It was an early ballistic missile. Our mission was complete. But there'd be more. Forged in the fires. We were the tip of the spear. This is the end of the damn war. And you weren't the tip of anything. Nothing you did on this mission helped end the war any faster. All you did was keep some deluded Nazi from flying to Argentina. Project Ether. Reviving the dead. 